Good day guys, welcome to 202 Comparing Datasets. Today we are going to be talking to a little bit more about statistics. We talked last class about histograms, we talked about dot plots. Today we're going to introduce a new graphical display called a box plot. And we're going to use, use it to represent real world data. We're also going to be taking a look at center and spread of the data. And we're going to determine which of these would be the most appropriate whenever we describe data. Remember last lesson, we also talked about statistics being the collection of information, displaying information after we analyze the information. So those three things are very important in statistics. So we're going to concentrate today a little bit more again on the actual sharing of the data. So after we analyze it, one of the ways we can display our data is what, using what we call a box plot. And a box plot is a graphical display of the center and spread of a data set. And it uses a five number summary system. The five number summary is the lowest value, the lowest quartile, also known as quartile one, the median, also known as quartile two sometimes, the upper quartile, also known as quartile three, and the highest value. You might see sometimes also the 25th percentile be used to refer to the lower quartile, which just means the 25th percent of the data is included with that one. The same thing with the upper quartile, 75th percentile. So what is center and what is spread? Well, center is just the value we use to describe the middle of your, of your data. And the spread tells me the variability of that data. How far is this spread out? What does the distribution look like? To describe center, we can use the mean, the median, or the mode. And to describe spread, we can use the interquartile range, standard deviation, or the range. Interquartile range sometimes is referred to as IQR and standard deviation. You will see that symbol there in parentheses. It is the Greek letter sigma. That would be the, the, the standard deviation, how far from the middle, if you're talking about mean. So what does a box plot look like? Here's an example of a box plot. So a box plot also referred to as a box and whisker, that's what probably you remember it as back in the day, has these five numbers that we talked about in the previous slide. And the five numbers here is the first one, the lowest value, which in this case is 65. The lower quartile, which in this case is a 70. The median, notice that the bar in this case represents the median, and that number is a 76. The right edge of the box, in this case is a 85, represents the upper quartile. And the highest value, or the maximum, in this case, a 95. These five numbers are connected through this box and this whiskers or, or the yeah the whiskers and these make up the five number summary. What about the quartiles? Where well, here's why they are called quartiles because between the minimum and the first quartile you have 25% of the data. So between 65 and 70, 25% of the data. Between 70 and 76, we have another 25% of the data. Between 76 and 85, or quartile 2 and quartile 3, we have another 25% of the data. And between the third quartile and the maximum, we have another 25% of the data. In other words, if, let me see my pen, here we go. If we have 16 observations or 16 values, what we then have is four values between 65 and 70, four values between 70 and 76, four values between 76 and 85, and four values between 85 and 95. That's because that's a quarter of 16. Each value, each four values would be quarter of the data. Notice that the box represents two quarters, so that's 50% of the data, and this is referred to as the IQR, or the interquartile range. So the spread of the 50%, the middle 50% is in this case, 85, which is the third quartile, minus 70, which is the first quartile. And that gives us 15 units. So between 70 and 85, there's a total of 15 units. That's the range. 
the bigger this number, the bigger the variability or the spread of the data. Another word you might hear me refer to in this lesson is distribution. And distribution simply refers to the overall shape that the data forms if you were to display it graphically. Last time we talked about dot plots. So let's say we have I don't know, four observations and three, two, one, and one. When we connect the top values of these, notice it makes this shape. It looks like a bell. What if we had a histogram? The histogram, the way we connect the values would be locating the middle of each of these bars. So here's the middle, 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 middle. And then when we connect them, we have a shape of the distribution. That shape, which almost looks like a bell, but a little bit higher on the left, is the distribution. So these shapes will make up the spread or the distribution of the data. Here's the most common ones, the ones that we might work with in this section. This one, let's say we have made just two values all the way across. This is uniform. All the data is the same. Here we may have what we call a bell shape. We may have some here, some in the middle, some on the right, some on the left. But when we connect them, the shape of the data is a bell. The middle here is separated by this high values on the right hand side. And the middle is separated on this one by the left values on the lower side. So when we're looking at centers and when we're looking at spread, how is that that I spread? Here's how box plots of those same spreads would look like. So the middle values here for the uniform data, notice that we have symmetry. The left and the right whisker are the same length. The box is almost the same as well. Same with this one. Left and right is called symmetric. Look, the T didn't work. Why? There we go. Symmetrical. So these on the top are symmetrical, the bottom are non-symmetrical. So that means that this values in the le on the right one here are thrown off. So the whisker on the left is way bigger than the whisker on the right because of these lower values throwing off your data. This is said to be left skewed. If you had the values on the right, that is right skewed and it throws your high values making the high the right whisker way bigger than the left whisker non-symmetrical so when we're talking about center and spread if we have those non-symmetrical ones median is the one that we're going to use for center spread is going to be iqr that's because the median it is said to be resistant resistant that means it resists high values or low values really well. No matter what you have, let's say you have a test scores and you had a 20. So no matter, let's say you have five, four more test scores. Well, that middle value is going to be the median no matter what that low value is because they cancel out. And that middle value will always be resisting. You could have had a 10 out there. It doesn't matter. No matter how low the value is, this whisker is going to be bigger on the left and that median is going to be resistant no matter what the values are. Same thing in this one, right skewed, high values, maybe you would have had 100. Those high values are going to make that median be the best choice for center and the IQR for spread. The opposite is true if they are symmetrical. If the values are symmetrical, if they are bell-shaped like this one, the left and the right are the same. If your box plot looks the left, I mean, looks the same on the left and the right, the mean and the median are equal. If they could be a little bit off, so they could be pretty close to equal. As long as they are pretty close or exactly the same, we always want to use mean for the center and standard deviation for the spread. And that's for symmetricals. So let's see some examples to see what this might look like on your homework assignments. Here's an example. It says, which of the following distributions will be best represented with the IQR? Now the IQR goes with the median. Another way of thinking about this is 
which of these have a high value or a low value, or which of these are non-symmetrical. Looking at my first one, I have a really right, uh, my high value here on the right-hand side makes my symmetric, my symmet symmetry, sorry, go away, making my right bar higher than my A, than my lower bar. So A works with IQR. Same thing for this one. We don't even have a left bar or whisker. We have what looks like symmetry in the middle, but this right whisker and left whisker is not the same on the left hand side. So IQR would also be the best method for this one. Now for C, symmetry is what we have. Left and right are equal, so nope. This one is best represented with the standard deviation and the mean for center. So what if we have a table of values? Here's an example. Here are the results of a survey. We asked 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders how many hours during the week they spend studying. And these are the results. Which of these can be best described by the IQR and which can be best described by the standard deviation? So again, when we're looking at these, the strategy is now going to be a little bit different. When we're talking about the IQR, this means we're looking at things like, for example, high whisker on the right, low whisker on the left, or vice versa. We're also looking for standard deviation to have these equal. You can also look, for example, at the median and the mean. If they are equal or pretty close, then standard deviation is the best choice. So let's take a look here at ninth graders. So when we look at the ninth graders, let's see what we're looking for the mean and the median. Notice that the mean and median are pretty close, but how can we know what pretty close is? So for this one, I'm also going to be taking a look at my whiskers. Here's my low whisker. Low whisker goes from zero to my first quartile of 1.58. That is approximately one and a half. So the length of that whisker is one and a half. When I look from the high to the third quartile, that is going to be approximately 0.25. That's a big discrepancy. 25 and 1.5, or 0.25 and 1.5 are way off, so I'm going with IQR for that one. No symmetry there for sure. Tenth graders have 2.33 and 2.22 as median and mean respectively. So in this example, they are pretty close, but let's, let's check their whiskers to make sure. We have 0.33 is the length of the low whisker, and 3 minus, I mean, 3 subtracted from 3.33 also gives us 0.33, which means they are equal. So we have equal whiskers, close mean and median, standard deviation is the way to go in this one. Pretty close here, and equal here. 11th graders, well, I don't even have to look at the whiskers, 1.83 for both. This automatically puts me a standard deviation as my best choice. The mean and the median are exactly the same, so I don't even have to look at the whiskers. When I look at the 12th graders, again, this 2.3 seems a little high, a little too high and uh, far away from that 1.3. That usually means an outlier is on the high end. Let's check a second whiskers and see. Well, the low whisker goes from 0.83 to 1.25. So if I subtract those, 1.25 minus 0.83, that's approximately 0.4. But this 8.3 minus 2.5, that's almost 6. They are nowhere near each other. That high value of 8.3 is definitely an outlier throwing off my mean. Notice that my mean is not resisting that outlier, making it IQR as my best choice. So again, IQR means non-symmetrical, or, or you're looking for standard deviation to be symmetrical. Equal mean and mean would also work. All right, so a couple last things here as we leave. On your choices, when you're looking at your vocabulary, make sure that you avoid any made-up vocabularies. 
such as fourth quartile and average deviation. If that's one of your choices, you can automatically delete it. It's no, not going to be an answer. Another thing to look for is the mean. You cannot get mean from a box plot. Never, ever, ever. There's only one exception, and we just discussed that. If they are symmetrical, that means the mean and the median would be exactly the same, then yes, you can tell the mean. So you give, give you a box plot and say, find the mean. They better be symmetrical. And outliers is the last thing here. Make sure that the outlier you understand only deals with mean and standard deviation. That's the only effects. Nothing with the IQRs with, nothing with the median, okay? Alrighty, guys, so that's it for me. This is my email address. If you have any questions, concerns, or you see anything that needed to be changed, just send me an email. You can email me too when you get hundreds on this. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.